and um, thank you very much indeed, Boris uh, for inviting me once again. After what he said to you a few moments ago, I can only disappoint you, I fear. Um, but I'm here really to make sure that this ends up through the day as an enormous conversation. It's not just about uh, the panelists here talking to you. It's about you engaging, and many of you who've been here before. And that's really the spirit uh, I'd like to uh, create for you. But you have to be involved as well. And that's why this address is up here, g1globalconference at gmail.com. Because while you're listening to the comments from the panelists, email me, and then I can introduce those ideas rather than saying who's got something to say. It works fantastically well, so please use it as a way of getting the conversation going and continuing the conversation, because what it means is that I can raise issues which are on your mind much sooner than uh, otherwise would be the case. And so that's the spirit uh, in which uh, we want to move forward. Uh, the next two sessions are going to be back to back. So if you've got questions about East Asia and the concerns there, please also think about that as well, while we're also considering uh, Japan passing to Japan rushing. It is going to be a rush for the next two hours before you have coffee, but you're only meant to grab coffee on the run and go immediately to the breakout session, so you're not going to rest at all between now and this evening. Let me, um, in the spirit of what Hori, Hori Sam would like uh, to happen, let me invite immediately the, the three panelists up to, up to the, uh, the stage, please. Uh, so we can get going. We've got, we've got an hour to consider um, Japan passing to Japan rushing. And please remember that email address. And Brian down at the front is going to curate the, the issues here for me so that at least we get an idea of which direction of travel we're taking. Uh, why don't you just sit here? Where else are we? Ah, good. Excellent. <laughs> So we have uh, Jess McCall, uh, who uh, since July uh, has been in his new job as uh, CEO of Wisdom Tree. Um, having been uh, in banking, you've been here for 30 years, but you understand Japan as well as any Japanese. So welcome, Jesper. Um, Hiro, welcome. Uh, and this is the first time that you've spoken in public since you took, uh, took up your job as CIO uh, at the beginning of the year. So welcome. And uh, we're very grateful to you. And I should underscore that this is on the record. So uh, there is a Twitter address as well. It's for you to use it as you think fit. Um, and also, of course, Heizo Takanaka, who is director of the Global Security Institute, a professor at Keio. And uh, we were talking just before we came on, of course, about the way postal services are. Th there's a lot happening in postal services here. And I remember talking to you when you were minister, literally 10 years ago, when you had been given that job of privatizing the, the postal services. So um, let's uh, very much uh, go forward with a spirit of trying to work out how fast and how successfully Japan is rushing. Because um, as Horisan has reminded some of you, I've been here before, but I've heard a lot of caution from this platform, a lot of concern. But now there is that uh, phrase of Japan rushing. Is Japan rushing? Let's get some opening remarks, um, not for too long, Jasper, is Japan rushing? Um, I think it's right to rush to Japan. The answer is yes. Um, it's a couple of reasons. The first one is very straightforward. Japan is cheap. Um, you know, the yen has depreciated, and you actually find that whether it's real estate, whether it is labor, uh, whether it is assets, for the first time since I've been in Japan, um, for the first time since 1985, I find Japan to be genuinely cheap. Just to give you an example, um, Nick kindly mentioned uh, that I've just opened an office here. It's right in front of Tokyo Station. Uh, it's a very prestigious building, and it is about 35% cheaper than it is on Park Avenue, right next to Grand Central Station. Hiring people here also, um, I'm not allowed to say this, the Japanese are very hasukashi, but again, hiring people here basically runs at a 20 to 30% discount compared to what you get, especially in New York, but also compared to Singapore. So is it different? Yes, it is, because it's cheap. In the stock market, this is very important as well, I spent 29 years of my life justifying a high price earnings multiple. Japan was trading on a 30, 35 times PE multiple, while America was trading at 15, Germany at 12, I had to explain why Japan was special. 
I don't have to do that anymore. Whichever way you look at it, the market is trading on a 14, 15 times earnings multiple. It is actually good news. There is no such thing as an Abenomics or Kurodanomics premium in the Japanese stock market. Investors actually have remained very skeptical. Earnings have more than doubled, but the earnings multiple has actually contracted over the last three years, which means that assets in Japan are very cheap. So, is it different? Yes, it is, because Japan has become cheap, Japan has become affordable, and as a result of that, you should come to Japan and invest. What you mean, though, really, is that Japan is good value. In English, to say it's cheap can suggest something else. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you. It's, it's, uh, it's Sunday morning. Yes, it's highly valuable. So, no, look, the, the whole thing is, I mean, you know, Japan has enormous potential, you know, in the sense of that when you look at the intellectual property here, this is the country where that has the highest ratio of research and development to national income. It's almost 3.5%. In America, they barely do 2.6% of GDP. And you know the potential, the intellectual property, whether it is in shipbuilding, whether it is in uh, general materials, whether it is in healthcare, the intellectual pro property wealth is here, is absolutely spectacular. Now it's become affordable for global companies to actually interact and buy into this. Right, well, thank you. Um, let's move on uh, to his uh, Takanaka. Uh, let's uh, remind uh, of what you said. Let's discuss changing the scenery. You and I have shared this platform a few times now. How dramatically, if at all, is the scenery changing? Not dramatically, not rapidly, but slowly but steadily, the scene is changed, in my understanding. Well, uh, well in my understanding, Abenomics are producing many good results. Regrettably, at this moment, uh, the uh, summer f factors are calling, they are murdering the discussion, economic discussion to some extent, because now the diet session is focusing only on national security issue, and the media people are covering only national security issue. Also in China, a lot of economic trouble, and this is prevailing in the world. So, so these factors are murdering the discussion, sound discussion in the economic policy. But, let me raise some examples of how the Japanese economy is changing. One is deflation. Uh, we use the term core core inflation rate, CPI rate, inflation rate, core core CPI, excluding the fresh fruit and energy. Uh, this ratio was negative increasing rate of CPI growth rate was minus 1% five years ago. Now positive 1% are reflecting crude dynamics. Well, so deflation is being conquered very steadily. This is the one point. The second one is stock price. Well, stock price now, the stock price very, the stock market very volatile, volatile as you know. But compared with the, the beginning of this year, Japanese stock price increase, that level is, current level is about 7% 7 higher than the uh, beginning. In the case of the United States, this is the 6% or lower than the previous. So in this regard, Japanese stock market the performance is very pretty better, reflecting the reform effort of the government. And also, the number of foreign visitors to Japan, they are actually rushing, rushing to Japan. Yes, I remember 10 years ago, I was in the cabinet. At that time, I proposed uh, to, to, to double the foreign visitors. At that time, uh, five million foreign visitors are coming to Japan at that time. And so, uh, let's double this in five, eight to 10 years. Many people didn't believe, didn't support that. But two years ago, this, this exceeded uh, 10 million. Now, last year, 13 million people visited Japan. And this year, maybe 17 million people will, come, uh, will be visit Japan. This case, this, uh, this Japanese people are rushing. Maybe the one reason will be everything is cheap here. But anyway, the, 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 this kind of good result uh, caused by the economics is now. Now, we can see a lot of evidences. The important point is now, the key word today will be reset. Reset the economic discussion. Because, well, Prime Minister Abe had a very strong political capital, but he's now using most of his political capital for the security discussion in the diet and in the public. So now is the time, maybe, maybe this week, this week, this uh, uh, the legislation for national security will be approved in the diet. Beyond that, it is very important to reset 
the economic discussion from national security to economic again. And maybe Mr. Abe and Chief Cabinet Secretary Suga are both are very realist, so they will do that. I believe in that. But just to be clear, just because something is cheap and attractive in the way that Jesper's put over, what does that tell us about the attraction of Japan now, how much it is rushing, and do you believe it is rushing in the right direction? Yes, the right direction. But still, we take an example of the foreign visitors. They are rushing to Japan. But in the case of Fukuoka City, I, the other day I had a chance to visit Fukuoka City of Fukuoka. Every day, 5,000 people are driving there uh, by cruising ship. But 5,000 people, there's no transportation between the port and central city, central part of the city. Now 150 buses are there, and the, 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 the immigration officer, number of immigration officer is very cheap. So the, the, the site or the spot of, of tourism is in chaos, in chaos. So we need more, more effort. To, to provide some kind of infra, infrastructure, infrastructure, et cetera, et cetera. But so, we still we have many things to do, but this the direction of the change is right. So we are moving toward the right direction. Hiro, let's move on with you. We're delighted that you've chosen to come here to give your first public comments. It's taking up your job uh, back in January. You were in London before that for, for many years. You've been in the private sector. Now you're handling uh, the government in investment fund, uh, the pension fund. Um, would you just like to underline specifically the size of the fund now and the importance of the fund and what you are seeing in terms of the direction of travel as you look at the risk in the fund and what is happening and what is likely to lie ahead? Well, thank you, Nick. And, uh, well, most of you probably know already, but uh, we manage the, uh, the Japanese uh, public pension fund uh, that currently we are managing about 1.1 trillion US dollars, uh, which is probably the, by far the biggest uh, public pension fund reserve uh, in the world. And uh, we, uh, just given by that size, we own uh, more than like a, probably 8% of the Japanese equity market, and we own very close to 1% of global capital markets. So uh, we are a significant, significant holder of the world uh, global uh, risk assets. And uh, the last year, we made a, a drastic uh, revision of the our asset allocation. Uh, and uh, with the new uh, alloc asset allocation, we, all, we now uh, invest 50% of our fund in uh, uh, global equities, including domestic and, uh, and the foreign equities. So we have a significant, uh, uh, we made a significant impact, particularly uh, in the Japanese stock market. So uh, that's why I'm, you know, I really feel jealous uh, to uh, uh, Takenaka Sensei and Jesper. You can make a comment on whether it's cheap or not. <laughs> I probably shouldn't uh, make any comment about the. Uh, it's too cheap, yeah. <laughs> so uh, well, well, let me that's... ask you directly: Do you feel that Japan is cheap at the moment? <laughs> well, after or eight months, on? after eight on. months, I, I came back to Japan. I forgot how to interpret British English, so uh, I really didn't get your nuance. <laughs> So that's why I had to be clear. <laughs> well, the um, <clears throat> well, I think the uh, you know about the rushing uh, of the foreign uh, investor into Japanese equity market for the last probably like uh, 18 months is, first of all, they had a very high expectation for abenomics, and uh, I really strongly believe the first two arrow worked very well, and the uh, and also. The, the GPF change of revision of uh, asset allocation gave a strong sense of insurance to those foreign investors because they are buying in where we are buying up. So, uh, you know, uh, until now it worked very well. And from now on, this is a time for, it's a kind of moment of truth that the, uh, the Japanese government, and we, they have to prove that the arrow is now really working. And the, uh, the foreign investor, should be able to have a fair valuation of what's going on in Japan 
without the uh, sort of uh, uh, sense of security of the, uh, the GPIF to continue to buy into the equity market. So that's the, uh, the, the, the slight change of the other uh, circumstances with respect to the foreign investor, how they look at the Japanese equity market. But I'm genuinely positive about the other uh, uh, structural reform is actually happening, and uh, we can discuss and share some, some of the, you know, the uh, examples or evidences I observed. Uh, I think they change, things are changing. Hiro, I've got to ask you right at the beginning, because a lot of people out there, I'm sure, are thinking, why did he come back? Uh, why did you come and do this job, which actually is a very official job, as opposed to being um, in the, the corporate sector, coming back from London after, what, two decades, I think, there? Help us understand, because clearly you've made a judgment that Japan is rushing, and you want to be part of it now, back here. What was your assessment, and how are you, how are you managing to deliver that at the moment? Well, I think on the top of the, uh, the fact that I, owe, you know, I think this is a genuine honor for uh, the Japanese, as a Japanese national, to serve the country when the, uh, you know, they are going through the significant uh, change. And uh, I'm glad that the, uh, I spent the tw last 20 years being a lone wolf in the global capital market, and the, uh, I have been asked to uh, do something uh, for the nation. But the, uh, also, I had to make a judgment whether I can do really something. <laughs> because the, uh, if I come on board and uh, we cannot, I cannot change anything, it's going to be a waste of my, my, my time as well as the, uh, the, the government resource. So, uh, you know, uh, it was a tough judgment. But also, I had some faith in, first of all, up, you know, asking me to come back to take, over, take, take up this role itself is a significant uh, the, the sign of the, uh, the Japan is changing. So uh, I just uh, took it that as, the, uh, you know, uh, as a strong intention of Abe administration that they're really trying to just uh, make a structural reform. So, and also the, uh, the, some of the, uh, the capital market participants regarded my appointment itself as the, uh, the, one, the symbolic act of the, uh, uh, the Japanese uh, system reform. So, you know, I thought the, uh, I realize it's going to be challenging, but the, uh, I thought that there is some good chance of the, uh, the change to really happen. So uh, that's a, the other uh, judgment I made. And nine months on, are things moving in the same direction as you expected? I think things are changing a lot, and uh, I knew that things would change. It's a matter of how quickly we can change it. Okay, well that's this, how, how fast the rushing is taking place. Please file any thoughts you've got. Don't leave it right to the end, otherwise you'll say to me, I didn't ask my question or I didn't get my point over. So please do use that. And I will uh, obviously uh, build on whatever you want to say. I've got one question here about, about what the reset of economic policy should be. Is it about reset now? But Jesper, you wanted to come in. Yeah, I, I just wanted to bring out some facts in terms of the rushing. I mean, there's certainly, you know, uh, you know Japan is back on the map. Uh, of global investors, but, uh, but I just want to point out that you know, global investors are still underweight Japan. Uh, if you look at you know, global pension funds, global asset allocators, they're still you know, about 8 to 10 percentage points below a market neutral allocation. So they have been investing in Japan, they've been excited about some of the changes, they've been very, very focused on seeing the value and the fact that domestic institutional uh, investors led by Mizuno-san are actually discovering that value and are prepared to, to commit risk capital, but they have not really revved up their allocation. As I said, they're still underweight uh, according to all the data that is, uh, uh, that is available. And this gets me to the important point going forward. Because quite frankly, so far, the easy stuff has been done. We've seen an asset allocation change in the public pension fund, that's fine. We've seen Japanese corporations increasing their dividends, increasing their share buybacks, that's fine. That's actually very easy, given the enormous level of cash that the companies actually have. Now the reset, the round two of Abenomics, really is about delivery. Do you actually invest properly, and I mean corporate Japan, do you actually see business investment, investment for growth that actually yields rates of return, or are you going to, or is Japan going to go back to just investing, to buying trophy assets around the world rather than being return focused? The second thing is corporate governance. 
Over the last two years, great fanfare, great support from the government on the stewardship code, on the governance codes, with Mizuno-san's leadership there being there. But so far, nobody has been voted out of office. So next year at the shareholders meeting, it's going to start to get interesting because if I say, oh, dear management, you must have a rate of return of at least 5% on your equity. If you don't, I will vote against you. So far, that was all, ooh, that was just threat. Next year, if you don't start to vote against some of those managements, questions are going to be raised about how real this really is. Do you think there'll be that level of bravery? Absolutely. I'm, 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 I'm convinced that this is for real and that the insurance companies, the pension industry, is indeed going to honor their commitments to their uh, you know, investors, is going to actually honor their fiduciary responsibility, and is going to start to vote management out of office. But that's the start of the real revolution. Hey, Zern, Hero, do you think, are you expecting that, let's pick up on that specific issue, do you think that that is going to happen, is necessary, and that cultural change must be seen to happen in the coming months? Well, in the coming months, well, in the coming months, I'm not sure, but well, the next Prime year, Minister, the Prime months. Minister is very ready to reset the policy discussion. Mm -hmm. it's, I'm quite sure about that. From my economist point of view, I use the term reset the policy discussion. Three ty type of this uh, policy will be needed, and maybe Prime Minister House, Prime Minister Office will start this kind of discussion. The first one is the short-term policy. Well, uh, Chinese economy is now in trouble, and uh, uh, the day before yesterday, I came back from Darien uh, together with Nick uh, from the Davos summer Davos meeting. Uh, we are very. Uh, concerned about the, about the situation of the Chinese economy. In order to cope with that, the Japanese government should provide supplementary budget in this autumn. Uh, according to the estimate of the cabinet office, now GDP gap, demand supply gap is minus 1.7%, 1.7%. So several trillion yen level of supplementary budget is needed. This is the first policy in the short run. The second policy, this is related to the, the uh, opinion by uh, uh, Jesper. Well, we established the special economic zone. This is the starting up stage still, but we have to expand that. In this strategic economic zone, we are going to start accepting foreign labor, uh, focusing, first of all, the, uh, the housework support. This is a very important start of the labor market reform. So anyway, in the second, in the midterm, it is very important to expand this special economic zone. And in the long run, this must be very important. Maybe you know that, for example, in the United States, Larry Summers had been uh, making a, a caution, making a, a warning. The, the real interest rate, real uh, natural interest rate had been declining. The less investment opportunities are there, it is very important to increase investment opportunity. The de deregulation will increase investment opportunity of the private sector. At the same time, some scheme is needed to increase infrastructure investment. In this regard, recently, I have a very unique but very good uh, policy proposal. That is, uh, let's accelerate the speed of the uh, building of uh, magnetic deviation railway from Tokyo to Osaka. According to the original schedule, this will be created, completed uh, in 2027 to Nagoya, and to Osaka, between Nagoya and Osaka, it will uh, be completed in 2045. This is too late. In 2027, let's complete the, uh, the construction of this magnetic radiation railway from Osaka to Tokyo. Uh, this will create the mega region and promote the innovation of this country. This kind of long-term project is now, or national project now, uh, expected. This is my personal opinion, but I really hope the government will ser since, uh, seriously consider this kind of uh, plan. Hiro, can I just pick up on that point, please, which I raised a moment ago, uh, picked up from, from uh, what Jesper was saying about the need for change in management. What are you expecting, given you're investing in 10% of the Japanese market, what are you expecting, what do you want companies to do? What do you want the boards to be doing? What do you want the shareholders to be doing? Well, you just uh, asked Jesper whether they have a courage to do so. You mean uh, Japanese investors. And uh, I think the courage is something the, uh, the, uh, subjective. But the, you know, some community, uh, it works better when they have a rule. <laughs> 
force them to do something. So uh, when I first saw the, the Japanese the government is introducing a stewardship court, I thought you know it's a bit unnecessary because the other you know the shareholders should work in their own interest, so they should do it anyway. Like the U.S., they, doesn't, they don't have the stewardship court, but Japan needs stewardship court because the people don't want to take a risk being vocal. But this stewardship court make it their obligation to do so, because they have a stewardship obligation for their, for, for our case, our pensioners, to work, to engage with the other uh, corporation to help them to become more sustainable. So, what would you like company. to see done uh, as as such a significant stockholder? Well, I think definitely that the uh, you know uh, Japanese business has a lot of competitive advantages, but the, uh, the from investors' perspective. The, the weakness of a corporate governance, at least that's how it's perceived by the uh, investors, should be improved. So uh, this year, the combination of a stewardship court implementation as well as corporate governance court this year would give the, uh, the framework which let everybody work in that direction without thinking whether taking a risk or not. That's their obligation. So uh, hope, uh, I'm really sure that it will affect the Japanese corporation and management take the very you know, a drastic step to answer to those requirements. So, uh, Well, let's nail that issue now because we've got a lot of other issues coming up, but this particular issue, Hazel. Yes, this particular issue. Well, you, you mentioned the stewardship court and the corporate governance court. Two years ago, we started this kind of discussion in a council on industrial competitiveness. At that time, business leaders of this country, especially Kei Dunlang, were strongly against that. Mm. But in the past two years, they, they had to change their attitude. So in that sense, movement on the social atmosphere has changed, changed drastically. Are they, and really, also, are also, they really embracing it? Uh, right, right. And also, also the, the result of, uh, for example, ROE of Japanese businesses increased from 5.8% to 8%. So the social atmosphere has changed, social mentality changed, and the results are also there. And has the, has the mentality changed irreversibly, do you believe, on this? Well, it depends on the political leadership. Since Prime Minister Abe has a very strong mind for the reform, well, we, we, I do not expect this will be changed. Yes, Pope. Um, just, just to follow up something concrete, um, you know, has the mind. I mean, you know, if, you, if you're an investor in a Japanese company, um, you know, until two years ago, the large, you know, Fortune 50 companies would come and visit you, and you would ask, uh, what's your ROE target? And there would be a lot of sucking of teeth and going through the presentation on page 123 in the right-hand corner, there'd be a little ROE estimate. Now it's on the second page of every investor presentation. So it's no question that return on capital, capital efficiency is on the top of the agenda. And it's not an IR, it's not just an investor relation or public relations issue. It is driven, yes, by the changes in the mood here in the political landscape, the stewardship code, but it is driven by the one thing that nobody is allowed to talk about in Japan which is the fact that the real economic change is that the savings investment balance has churned from surplus into deficit. Japan's household sector savings rate is now negative, yeah. which means that Japan must attract global capital to sustain her quality of life. That's the stick that's actually driving the fundamental change here. All of a sudden, capital is in scarce supply. As a result of that, there is a focus on raising the efficiency of capital. It is irreversible. What should they do for 30 seconds? What should they do? It's very interesting. When they go and meet with foreign investors, they always say, Ooh, and now we're going to do Kaigai M&A. We're going to do an international acquisition. Said, the last thing you should do is an international acquisition because your company doesn't have the management know-how nor the human capital to actually manage successfully an international acquisition. Japan is a country of highly fragmented domestic industries. You should do domestic M&A, consolidate domestic industries. This country, for example, has 485,000 wholesalers of those 485,000 wholesalers, two-thirds do not have a customer who is a producer or a retailer. 
If you talk about getting the, your supply chain in order, this is an opportunity. If you can do the roll up, if you can be that catalyst, your margins are going to go off the charts. Let me just pick up on, uh, on again on this management issue. Thierry Port, for example, making a comment, hang on, how many US company managements are voted out of our office for low ROE? Not many and certainly not voted out by mainstream institutional investors. He's got an important point there, hasn't he? Is Japan about to go much further than, uh, than America, for example? Hiro. <laughs> <coughs> Is that what you'd like? <laughs> Well, I think the uh, well, Would I you think vote the them out of office? Well, well, we don't need to go as extreme as the U.S. But on the other hand, I think the uh, I always think the culture and a rule, uh, you know, debate in most of the other countries that the culture changes first, and the rule is a reflection of the new culture. But here, actually, the when people change the rule first, and it will actually affect the culture as well. So, uh, you know, the, this implementation of a stewardship code or corporate governance code will force them to change their culture. So uh, it's just a matter of their sequence, but the, I'm really confident that the, the culture will change. And the second question, how far we want to go with that? Well, from the investor's perspective, it doesn't matter whether the other management will be kicked out or not. The bottom line we still look at is whether the performances continue to improve and that their company is on a sustainable growth path. So, uh, you know, the, a lot of like a concept regarding the, uh, the how they should be uh, friendly with the environment and or they should be more socially uh, uh, you know, conscious. Those kind of things we should definitely take a look at. But again, let me keep nailing this. It's all very well removing management, but are you confident that there's a new cadre of managers, a new community, a new cohort which is competent, which is, uh, which is, uh, which is self-confident enough? to take over. It's all very well getting rid of people, but actually the realities are changing. I'm doing a big uh, project about thinking the unthinkable, and what you're seeing is a lot of senior executives who are concerned that actually the business of running companies and, and governments now is getting out of control because the events are moving so fast. Here, uh, about, the, about the business of, are you confident that those of your generation are ready to take over and that there is a, a significant <coughs> cohort ready? Well, I think the, uh, the one of the, uh, the sense of responsibility I feel personally is that the, uh, I'm among a few who actually, you know, the, uh, the put ourselves in the position to struggle within the very cohesive and a traditional organization. And Takenaka-san is one of the pioneers who did it, you know, the, some years ago. Uh, but Criticize so, that a lot. <laughs> yeah, 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 criticize it all. So uh, I definitely think that I have to be successful for the uh, other people to take the, uh, the same uh, challenge. So, uh, you know, you're right. I mean, the, it's a very difficult challenge, but the, uh, you know, the, some of the pioneers has to win, the, win that the, uh, the fight. Otherwise, nobody wants to follow. So uh, I really think that the, uh, you know, it's not only uh, for my personal uh, career achievement, but the, uh, I definitely have to deliver so that the people think, oh, Actually, we can do it. But the one evidence of the, uh, the Japan is changing is when I got into this position, there's a lot of noises in the media. People are very kind of felt uh, uh, uncertain. But the, uh, the recently, post of saving in Japan, Yucho appointed the, uh, the ex Goldman Sachs banker as a CIO. Nobody paying attention to it. So uh, <laughs> I definitely want him to be in the, the tough position as I was. But uh, you know, it's, it's just the, one of the evidence that the other things are changing. And uh, I just want to also touch upon like uh, you know JA, you know agricultural reform, and the uh, uh, also Congo Sindio, which is the uh, the, the mixed use of the public and private healthcare insurance. They, if they happened five years ago, you know the uh, the media covered those things at least a week. But this time they cover out one day, and next mm. day they talk about the AMPO or some, some other things, which meaning Japanese people are getting used to changes. So uh, I think that when you talk about a culture, you know, the, uh, we may ap approach from different direction uh, from the uh, you know, other, like uh, you know, the European American does, but the, uh, the culture is obviously changing, and we see a lot of evidence that people just don't notice. 
All right, well, look, I'm getting a lot of thoughts from uh, all our friends in the audience. Let me, um, or the fellow delegates, I should really say, this from Hiroshi Goto. Are there sufficient investment opportunities for Japanese corporations in Japan to use huge cash on balance sheet to raise ROE? You say, you may say innovation, structural reforms, etc., but how can those contribute? Jesper. I don't think it's so much, I mean, innovation, everybody wants to talk about innovation. It's like, wow, let's talk about the internet. These are, you know, blue sky issues. Um, you know, I think it's, 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 it's much more simple than that. You've seen recently in the last couple of months, you know, for example, in something as boring as insurance, uh, you know, you've seen a couple of mergers, uh, you know, where I forget what exactly the ranking was, number three merges with number eight, you know, and is going to be number two or whatever it's going to be. That sort of integration, you know, um, you know, getting for the newly integrated company, getting a proper IT structure into place, streamlining the HR department and consolidating the sales force, that sort of step-by-step -step stuff is much, much more exciting than the big talk about, ooh, let's innovate. Yeah, we all want to innovate, but that's not what the real world is about. The real world is about Kaizen. Right, is about step-by-step -step improvement and you know, ROE enhancing or return on investment enhancing uh, investment opportunities given the fragmented nature that Japan has. Look at the pharmaceuticals industry, for example. Yeah. Look even at the car parts industry or the car industry itself. Why does Japan have seven car companies? I mean, is this really viable you know, on a 10-year view given the global competition that you have? And there are all sorts of weird little participation, hello, yes, we like each other alliances you know, amongst those car companies, but make something big, like Germany did with Volkswagen, um, you know, and you actually have got something that can actually give you know, uh, uh, the rest of the, comp the, the global companies a run for their life. So you know, I think you know, this is not about the sexy stuff. This is not about the internet. This is not about healthcare. Of course, it's about that as well well, but it's much, much more about what the Japanese are really good at, which get into the engine room, look at the pipes, look at the sewers, and figure out a better way to connect. Takanaki That's time. what they can do. Well, now the, uh, in the Abenomics, so-called the third law, the deregulation is advancing, especially making use of some method. Well, we can you actually you, uh, increasing the investment opportunity. Let me raise several examples. Do you know what's happening in Sendai Airport? Sendai Airport, Airport of Sendai. So-called concession mechanism is now working. Uh, that's the, the day before yesterday, uh, it, uh, the, uh, the government announced Tokyo Group we have chance to uh, take this opportunity of concession. Concession means the, the infrastructure is still owned by the government, but the, the right to operate will be sold to the private sector. Now, this is the investment opportunity. So far, this airport business was monopolized by the public sector, but now business sector has an opportunity for investment. Another one would be the agriculture. Uh, in the small city of Hyogo Prefecture named Yabu, this was designated as a, 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 a special economic zone. Now, now uh, so far, so far, uh, usual businesses like your companies are prohibited to go into the agriculture business, agriculture sector. But now, Oryx decided to create a farm there, and Lawson decided to create a farm there. Now, investment opportunity is actually expanding. So, so this kind of effort is very important, and this will expand even from now. The, the problem, if any, the speed of that is not very fast, but slowly but steadily it is advancing. Now is the time to accelerate that. This is the reason why I use the term reset the economic discussion. Well, let's pick up on reset if we can, because there are quite a few questions here uh, relating to, to reset. Um, this from Noriyoku Shikata. Um, when we talk about reset to economic policy, what are priority regulatory reform initiatives which you would propose, assuming you're, you were to become uh, chief economic policy advisor uh, to uh, the prime minister? Um, and this from Hiroaki Toya. I completely agree that Japan is cheap or undervalued but would like to highlight one of the issues about Japan, lack of confidence and inherent skepticism. And I think what is, uh, and, and Hiroaki Toyo is asking, what is the catalyst that would enable to change the perception of investors and business leaders inside and outside Japan to unlock the value, unlock the value? Jesper. Well, if this were America, you'd just say greed, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but this is Japan, so what would you say? Um, in, if this is Japan, what I do say, you don't want to become a colony of China. 
Um, you know, so you got to work harder. You got to sweat your assets. Uh, you want to be better than them. Um, you know, more specifically, I do think that there's plenty of ambitious people. Uh, if you look at, uh, you know, the youth, uh, you know, the entrepreneurial drive uh, that is coming through, if you look at the number of IPOs and successful business models that are actually being listed here in Japan, there's absolutely no shortage of that. The problem is that, you know, there is an establishment, you know, that uh, is very good at defending its de facto oligopolies, right? And, uh, you know, whether you can break through these oligopolies or not, well, you know, you've got to fight even harder. Um, you know, so I think that uh, the ambition is actually there. Um, you know, the intellectual property is there. Um, yes, go for it. But, you know, whether you like Mr. Abe or not, and he does have that ambition. He wants to be a player. He wants for this country to be a player again. And the good news is, whether we like it or not, you know, he's going to be around for at least another three years. So we are actually getting consistency of policy so that if you do want to compete, you actually can. I once used to say, you know, Japan is makegumi tengoku, right? It's a loser's paradise. It's fantastic to be a loser in Japan because everybody will take care of you. It's very difficult to be a winner because you're the nail that gets hammered back in, right? So embracing this success culture, right, I think is necessary. So we just need for the Japanese soccer team, you know, and the Japanese tennis players to win a little bit harder. Do you want to talk about football or economics? <laughs> I am German. A discussion about football is seriously boring with me. <laughs> Thank you. Because you we, we, we win in eight minutes. Takenaka-san, picking up on investor, unlocking value, the kind of thrust we're seeing here of questions. Well, honestly speaking, there is no magic way to, to for the economic growth. Because in the case of the first arrow of monetary policy, the second arrow of fiscal policy, these are related to the demand side of the economy. However, certainly most related to the supply side of the economy. If we look at the case of the German reform, well, it took seven to 10 years, right? Before seeing the full result of this kind of reform. So first of all, we should, we should be much more patient for this kind of growth strategy. This is the first point. And at the same time, well, uh, at the same time, we, we need more, uh, well, uh, effort to change the expectations of the market. One good way will be the cabinet reshuffling, which will occur in about two weeks from now. Today, Mr. Kono Taro is here. He's a very promising, promising and uh, that member. If he's nominated as a Minister of Economy, then in this case, we can change the, uh, the expectation of the plan. This kind of, this is the part of important reset process. And so personnel transfer is an uh, important problem. And, but anyway, we need patience and promote. We already have a scheme special economic zone, a concession, et cetera, et cetera. It is important for make use of that, full scale make of that, under the strong leadership. In that, in that sense, I'm uh, very expecting a lot of the cabinet reshuffling in about two weeks. Hiro, unlocking the value. Well, I think the, uh, the first of all about the um, uh, economic policy they can do is on the third arrow thing. Um, I think it's being underestimated by foreign and uh, domestic investors. Uh, one of the reasons is, you know, during the uh, uh, Koizumi reform, the uh, postal, bank, uh, postal service reform was a really a big error. So they made a big hole in a very icy, you know, lake, for example. They made a big hole in, in the middle, but the problem is making a big hole in the middle of the, uh, the frozen lake, it doesn't break the fl ice floor. Well, I'd better but check with Takanaka-san. Did you feel you were making a mistake 10 no, years no, ago? No, 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 <laughs> the, 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 he's <laughs> talking about I'm not criticizing. <laughs> I, I just don't like the, uh, the British sarcasm, but. <laughs> I'm not being sarcastic, I'm asking a question. <laughs> no, no, I'm just joking. Uh, is but, that uh, why you left Britain? Because you couldn't uh, he's take just sarcasm. He's he just talking about strategic agenda. Yeah, strategic, strategic agenda, agenda is needed. Yeah. So let me, let me continue. <laughs> but the, uh, this time, the reason it's not as visible is they actually, economic third arrow is not really a big arrow, but they are making a lot of small holes in the system. So I actually strongly believe that when, if you really want to the break the, uh, the uh, frozen, you know, the icy uh, floor on the lake down, you need to make 
many, many holes rather than making a big hole in the middle. So uh, I think I'm actually glad it hasn't been really, you know, the visible that the, uh, the each, uh, arrow, you know, the, uh, uh, the small arrow is making a little holes in the system because it may just, uh, you know, let the bureaucrats the, uh, the down their guard. So uh, that's the one thing. And the second, unlocking the value. Uh, I've been always very uh, frustrated that the uh, Japanese investors have never been a very long-term investor in uh, Japanese equities. Because if you look back, when the, uh, the disaster hits Japan, you know, it's always Japanese investors who sell off. And it's always foreign investors coming to buy, trying to just, uh, you know, the, get the, uh, the value stock. So first things uh, is that we need to let the Japanese investor become confident and a long-term investor. And uh, to do that, it's probably easier for us to get the uh, foreign investor come in. Because unfortunately, Japanese people seem to regain the confidence when the foreigner says, you are doing a good job. So uh, I think the, uh, the, this is one of the reasons I appear at this conference, because this is the English, uh, you know, the, uh, English conference. So that I'm hoping that we can reach to the uh, foreign investors. Uh, we definitely need to uh, gain the uh, confidence or face from the foreign investor to actually, as a bit sounds a bit sarcastic, but to give a confidence to a Japanese investor. <laughs> this time last year, we were talking extensively about tax and what would happen with the rise of taxation. But as, a, as an outsider, I'm sitting here thinking about reset. Is it really about a reset? Or is it about a, re, a fine tuning, a recalibration of the direction of travel, because reset suggests a significant recalibration of what was being done. Takanaka-san, do you still feel comfortable about using the word reset, or is it about readjusting the sat-nav on this one? I am expecting the Prime Minister will take a policy of reset. This is my desire, actually, but I believe he as a realist, well understands that. Prime Minister well understands that. You mentioned the tax system, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, last year, uh, Prime Minister Abe appeared in the keynote address, keynote speech uh, in the World Economic Forum, uh, the Davos meeting, and he made a lot of promises. One is to reduce the, the corporate tax rate, and this was done from 5% effective, effective tax rate in Japan was 5, 35%, as high as that of the United States. Now this is going to be reduced to the 31%. But still, in England, 24 percent or so, but more effort is needed. This kind of discussion will definitely start from this autumn, and on the and, and also the, this is the, the reset means the the the, 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 the bold or reform or wide range uh, large scale of reform, as you mentioned. Actually, this is the reason why I'm proposing personally the establishment or building the magnetic aviation railway from Tokyo to Osaka. This kind of national project, with a, a kind of a symbol, or they could become strategic agenda for the reform. By doing that, we can create the, the largest mega region in the world. And this will also create promoting the innovation in the world. Because innovation is a, uh, means a composing something, composing something new. So in that sense, but so it, at this moment, uh, we cannot say the reset will start definitely. But Yes, there's a high expectation for myself. The Prime Minister and Chief Cabinet Secretary will shift their balance, shift the power from the national security discussion to the economic discussion. This is actually happening. And, and it is very important for us to, to, to watch carefully what's happening beyond the, uh, this cabinet reshuffling. Jesper, I tell you what, Jesper, could I get a microphone, please, to Vishal Agoval? Where are you, Vishal, please? Please, can I get a mic? I'll come to you in a moment, if I may, because you raise a very interesting point as an outsider, foreign investor, please. No, I, I, you should stick with the word reset, uh, in the sense of that the goals have been reset, right? Um, you know, you do have now, you know, in the, in the money world, you do have double-digit RE targets. Um, in the money world, you do have, very importantly, a target, a reset by the Japanese banks to unwind further their cross shareholdings. I mean, that's a very, very important part. If you look at uh, you know, the fact that 30 years ago, about half of the Japanese shares were owned within the Keiretsu, within the Mochiai, within the cross shareholdings structure, now it's down to 15%. And you know, as you know, the Japanese banks 
under the advice you know, of the FSA uh, are going to be unwinding that further right, uh, over the next 12 months. Uh, if you look at the labor market, right, there is a reset because you do have now targets for women right, uh, at the director level as well as at the overall level. That is something that two years ago you wouldn't have been able to talk about. Um, you know, so I think from that perspective, you know, there is a complete resetting, uh, you know, of the targets, uh, you know, for this country, for this economy, and for the individual actors, uh, you know, within the system. What is very, very exciting is that, of course, you know, you'll have waves of political priorities, right? And there is another agenda. There is a security agenda. Whether we like it or not, I'm not a security expert, but obviously something has changed in Asia Pacific and, you know, Japan. All right, we'll talk about that shortly. Okay, uh, you know, so, but you've got on the economic side, uh, now the budget debate is going to start in a couple of weeks, right? That's the reset that you get in the cycle where the focus comes back on economic matters. Let me go to Vishal, please. Um, you, you come from uh, Nepal, India, textiles, vice president of the Resu Group. But you may, uh, particularly, you, you're, you're alerting here. What if the yen is back to the 80 to 90 range? Quote, everything will fall apart. Why do you use that kind of rather apocalyptic language, everything will fall apart? I personally feel everything is related to yen right now. Doing business in Japan since last 20, 15 years, when the yen was 75, the whole trading was all-time low. Right now it's at the all-time high. As an investor, international investor, what's the guarantee for future if I want to invest, say, $20 million right now in Japan? Will the yen sustain in, say, next five years? What if we have a new PM in the future? And how about the politics? It's only because of the PM right now. The yen is where it is right now. Is he justified in being that um, institutionally, instinctively pessimistic, Hero? The first of all, the, um, uh, definitely currency exchange rate is a big factor, but it's never been the only factor. That's one thing you should be very in mind. And the second is, well, the uh, same thing applies to any country, particularly like uh, India. India has, a, a, you know, provide more different type of uncertainty to investors. You know, Japan has m much less uncertainty with respect to like, uh, you know, the political system, et cetera. Now the Abe san is going to be in uh, the, his leadership position longer. So uh, every market has a different factors to uh, take into account. And uh, definitely, we shouldn't underestimate the uh, effect of foreign currency exchange rate, but also we shouldn't underestimate what's really happening fundamentally at the corporate level. You know, the, I always tell the, the, the foreign investor, if you look at the uh, changes of delta of changes happening at the Japanese corporation at the moment toward the, uh, the positive direction, we are having the, the, the biggest delta. So, uh, you know, the, uh, if you look at, you, you know, the countries in India and the countries in the other, you know, European countries, it's very difficult to observe those are positive changes. It's more, uh, you know, the company by company, you need to just uh, make a judgment. But here in Japan, because of all those holes and the political, uh, you know, the uh, uh, initiatives, it's actually happening across the, uh, the you know, the corporate world which is one of the biggest you know, the positives if you are thinking about investing in Japan. But I'm not you know, saying negative about India, but the, uh, the currency is not only a factor. Right, just, just quickly. Just I've... very quickly. It used to be that the yen was the only stick for changes in governance because governance in Japan was so entrenched, right? Nothing would move it, but if the yen appreciated, you had to restructure, you had to do something. That's no longer the case. There I completely agree with Mizuno-san. So we can buy me a drink and I'll tell you where the dollar is going, right? <laughs> um, you know, but for all intents and purposes, the fact that you do have the stewardship codes, that the cadets are breaking down, that corporate managers are now managing for capital efficiency, that means that even if the yen were to go to, say, 100, right, that that doesn't mean, right, that, all, that, all, that, 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 the, that it's game off here in Japan. All right, we've got eight minutes to run, a lot of questions still. Let me pick up on demographics. Um, how does changing demographics relate to how Japan should proceed now? That from Trent Messek, who's a Globus graduate. And then uh, another critical issue about skills, about the uh, aging of the population. 
the issue of immigration. Does rushing include immigration? If yes, what kind of economic policy is therefore required? That from Takeshi Saito, a student here. Um, I'll be extremely brief on the question of immigration because we can talk about this in a long time and it's very emotional, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. Let's look at the facts. Five years ago in the greater Tokyo metropolitan area, 3.1% of the people who received a paycheck were non-Japanese. Today it's 54 and so what conclusion are you drawing? That they are pragmatic. When I was a student 35 years ago, I was 30 years, 35, I'm not that old. Um, 30, so when I was a student 30 years ago on a student visa, I was allowed to work for 12 hours a week. Today, if you come as a student, you're allowed to work for 38 hours a week, which is three hours more than a Frenchman. <laughs> well, aging of the dem demography and low birth rate is a very serious problem of Japan, I agree. And this is, a, at the same time, a very common problem for all Asian countries. But is that going to slow down the rushing, Takanaka-san, or not? Yeah, uh, slow down the, the rushing. Oh, yes, it depends on the policy from now, of course. For example, the, now, as was mentioned by Jesper, the, the investment saving balance is changing a lot. The, the saving, household saving rate is now negative. But this is changing the attitude of Japanese corporate. That's an exactly important point. And we are ready to accept foreign labor in the special economic zone. As I mentioned, we are going to accept the labor. And this is a very test case. And beyond that, beyond that, the people attitude will also change. Prime Minister at this moment never used the term immigration. He said we are accepting the guest workers, considering the, uh, the uh, people's sentiment. But in about three, five years, the, the, the atmosphere of the society also changed. We have to, we have to start a very fundamental discussion of the immigration, immigration, just the case of the German. So, um, well, for example, the president of Kedanlen already Could promised as far as Germany? Could it go as far as Germany has realized this problem, even before the current migration crisis? <laughs> just by <laughs> respond that. But, but, but anyway, my, my point is, my point is, We'll start this kind of a discussion quite soon, in about three years or so. You think it'll be that quickly? Because there's another question here, uh, literally picking up on womenomics as well, to combine that with real change, real change on immigration policy from Hiroaki Sitoya here. However, immigration seems like a political landmine. No one in significant position is really pushing it or prepared to embrace it. You're saying that the politics of this are changing fast. Well, politics has, will have to change because actually the total population draining, we are suffering from labor shortage, and the starting point is accepting the guest workers, but this will develop to the much more of the fundamental discussion on immigration. So it will take three or two, five years more, but, but definitely this will start. I should tell you there are a lot of questions here about that, about population growth and low population growth from Shitao as well. So, you know, this is clearly something on the minds of the delegates. Can I just make one point on that? One of the biggest obstacles is actually not the rules and regulations of immigration in Japan. The biggest problem is actually corporate management. Um, corporate management is not set up to evaluate people on the basis of performance. They are set up to evaluate basis uh, people on the basis of their you know seniority system um, you know when I sit in these government panels they always say Ooh, mr. Cole we want people like you you know with a PhD and I said sorry I actually dropped out of the program <laughs> um, you know, but um, you know but uh, in all seriousness you know we want the best and the brightest well I'm sorry the best and the brightest will not work for a Japanese company. If you're a graduate of MIT and you get a job offer from an American company, a European company, or a Japanese company, just be, be realistic about it. If you're good and lucky at the American company, you know, in 15 years' time, you can run the company. If the European company, if you're good and lucky in 15 years' time, you can be in charge of a region, Asia or Latin America or whatever. In a Japanese company, after 15 years, what's it going to be? Kacho? <laughs> All right. We've got three or four minutes. Um, can I just, underpinning your last thoughts, um, two sobering thoughts here. One from Trent Messick, who's a Globali Globus graduate. Who or what part of Japan is rushing, is uh, that question, which is interesting. And quote from Leo Castillo, who's a student here. Given that it is a reset, what should Japan stop doing in order to move forward? Two final questions for you in Hiro. 
All right, well, I'll go to Takanaka-san. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, I was prepared to make a comment on the demographic issue, so you can... All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Most panellists always ignore my questions right, anyway, okay, so why don't... <laughs> well, that's right, but the... Uh, uh, well, the, uh, the talking to the foreign investor, uh, the uh, one... Well, they seems to have a different concern over Japanese, you know, the market or Japanese economy, but one common... Uh, the concern raised by any foreign investor I talk to is a demographic challenge. So uh, that's, we definitely need to uh, come up with a solution. So uh, for the immigration, I always take the, uh, my foreign friends to the 7-Eleven, uh, uh, and they, I pointed out, he's Chinese, he's Korean. But you know, for them, they look all the Japanese. So it's just uh, reality is, programmatically speaking, as the uh, Jesper mentioned, we seem to have a lot of like, acceptance of having foreign workers. And uh, that's one thing, but it's taking a, cha uh, taking a time. So we need to have some polit uh, policy uh, measure uh, to make it more visible uh, to the world. And I agree with the Jesper that the, uh, the, particularly at the management level, we need to have, executive level, we need a foreigner and as well as the women to give a diversification to the uh, management uh, of the Japanese uh, the corporations. Uh, and uh, reset and those things which Japan should stop doing, uh, stop questioning whether we should stay in uh, you know, the uh, capitalism. <laughs> because I see a lot of the arguments that the, uh, you know, the people you know, once in a while start questioning whether you know, the market mechanism is working or not. You know, even China doesn't que ask that question anymore. You know, we have to live with that system unless somebody comes up with a total, you know, totally different system, you know, ideology or system. So we just need to focus on what's the programmatic the approach or measure we can take to change in a better direction what we have now rather than questioning. Takanaka-san. Uh, responding to questions by Nick. Well, uh, who are rushing to Japan? Well, man and money, resources are rushing to Japan, seeking for the investment opportunity. This is one answer. And what we should stop for the reset? The, the, I, I, I told you now that some factors are moderating the very sound economic discussion. One of the biggest factors is the very biased report of the news media. This should be improved. Well, this is exactly what I expect. Yes, Bob. Um, so what they should stop doing is to stop bossing the regions around and telling them what to do with their development policy from the center. Uh, so, you know, devolution, um, you know, uh, administrative reform between the center and the whole molass of the regional authorities, um, I think would be a very, very good, uh, 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 good focus to actually ease, uh, eke out uh, uh, greater efficiencies. Um, the one thing who should be rushing to Japan more, and what I actually am really focused on as the proof that the optimism on Japan is right, uh, is not the marginal foreigner coming back to the world, uh, to Japan. That's nice, that's good. What I'm interested in is I want a big industrial conglomerate to actually start reinvesting in Japan. When that happens, when the locals invest in their own market, then you know it's for real. So that's what's in store for 2016. Thank you. Thank you. Let me um, finally, we're, we're delighted to have had you here, Hiro. Hiro. Um, can I ask you about what your impressions are coming back to Japan nine months into such an enormous job at a critical time, but particularly about the mindsets you're discovering here? You left the toughest question toward the end, so... <laughs> That's why I did it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, I think the, uh, you know, the, I have a mixed, uh, you know, observation that the, uh, the one of the area which I thought the, I'm going to face a lot of, you know, challenges or conservatives, it appeared to be actually the Japanese people are now uh, more, uh, you know, the... Uh, accepting the, uh, the different idea of the changes. So, uh, and also, I, I noticed the, uh, the sometimes the, uh, the, you know, the, some, of the, some particular part of the Japanese society seems to be much more conservative than I expected. So uh, it's a mixed feeling, but the reality is, uh, you know, I'm actually having had a very good time uh, working with the other uh, Japanese bureaucrats, as well as the other uh, politicians, and also the other uh, staff member working for me has been very, very, you know, the. Uh, quick to accept the uh, changes. So uh, I think the uh, people shouldn't underestimate that the uh, Japan took only a couple of, you know, only 10 years 
to change from the uh, the wearing the uh, samurai sword to uh, to a mod you know the modern industrialized society. So uh, we are very good at changing at a quick pace once everybody feels the urge to do so. So uh, I'm actually trying to just uh, send a message to the other Jap my Japanese fellow that we should be few eyes to change, and everybody share that urge. We are very good at changing. So can we conclude that bureaucracy is rushing as well? Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Yes, okay. I think so, yeah. I just wanted to check with you, because that's the kind of conclusion, and it's not often one can say that bureaucracy is rushing. I think the bureaucracy is nothing, and the bureaucracy rushed in the past in Japan. So uh, I'm, I'm always quite optimistic that the, uh, you know, bureaucrats are very, very capable people. So uh, because of that, sometimes they become very negative and they block system. But the, uh, they are capable people. So with the right incentive and a leadership, they will change the system. I think I'm the, quite optimistic about it. That's a really this, important message to take away from this. Well, first one thing: session. this is a country of shock therapy. Please consider a case of major restoration and uh, de uh, democratization after the Second World War. The shock therapy is now yeah, could occur. Therapy, yeah. So let's leave it on that optimistic note, uh, shock therapy and also bureaucracy rushing, as well as Japan rushing. Can I thank you all very much indeed? Uh, Mizuno-san, Takanaki-san, and Jesper Cole, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.